because we're, we're told that mobile payments are the future. So from Monetize, uh, would you please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Johnson. Thanks, Jamie. Good afternoon, everybody. So we all need to manage our accounts, to make payments and to buy things. And we all have a range of choices for how we do those things. And, and actually those choices are very different in different countries. So the way that people pay their bills in America is very different from the way we pay them in the UK, very different from the way they're paid in India or in South Africa. And the reason that the mobile phone is becoming so important for money is because it can give people a better way of doing these things that they need to do. So if I'm out shopping and I want to know if I've got enough money to buy something, well, yeah, I could go home and log on to internet banking, or I could go and queue up at a branch or an ATM, but compared with that, be able to just, while I'm still talking to my mates, walk along and tap out a simple balance inquiry, that's way better. And that's why the humble balance inquiry is a genuine killer app in the world of mobile money, and we, we just saw a bit of that response there. But just because something's on the mobile phone doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. And this space is littered with stuff that's really clever technology, but doesn't really solve a customer's problems. So if I'm going into a supermarket to buy a can of Coca-Cola, and I've got to download a special app, register some card details in there, scan the barcode, flick through some payment credentials, enter a pin, approach the point of sale holding the phone at just the right angle. That's rubbish. That's not nearly as good as just taking out a card or even, God forbid, using cash. I think it was Drucker who said that the mass market will only change their behaviour for something that's ten times better. It's not a question of doing something that's nearly as good on mobile. But nonetheless, the power of the smartphone is changing so many of the ways that we use money in our lives. I mean, think about it now, whether it's hailing a taxi, whether it's booking a bed and breakfast, whether it's paying for your coffee in Starbucks, all these things, the pace at which commerce is moving to the mobile phone is breakneck. And what that's driving is really a convergence in commerce. It's driving battles between each of these sectors as well as battles within them. So if we take each sector in turn, so for banks, at a time when generally around the world banks aren't as popular as they might have been, actually, is there any wonder that banks are prominent in their advertising about smartphone apps because this is something that's cool, it's something that their customers love doing. So we see the banks competing with each other over who's got the best mobile banking app. And then we see the telcos and the mobile manufacturers wanting to leverage their assets in this burgeoning mobile money space as well. We've then got another whole battle going on in the area of retailers over the past few years. Hasn't it been extraordinary? All the fast food restaurants where you book ahead to pick up your food and then you, you, you click and you go and collect it at the store. Really starting to embrace mobile to enhance the customer proposition in the retail environment. And then we come to those internet giants. And for them, you know, the opportunity is to move their business model from just e-commerce to physical commerce. And that's like a, a 20 times multiplier. So if you're someone like Google, I guess, you're not interested in squabbling over a measly share of a 1% payment commission. It's not the payments that you're interested in. What you're interested in is the commerce, it's the data that comes from these rich interactions that people are having over the smartphone and the opportunity to use that data to drive merchant content and therefore to earn an advertising commission like they do on the internet. So rather than a share of that measly 1% payment commission, it's a 5%, 10%, 15% advertising commission. Now this is a battle to the death for the firms that are involved. This, if we think about banks, could end up really badly for banks. It could be that in future, all the sex and violence of mobile commerce is going on through some Google app or Facebook app or somebody else's app, and all the bank is seeing is once a month the load 
of somebody else's wallet. There's no data about the interaction. That engagement with the customer is just being pushed into the background. The bank is just becoming a dumb pipe. It's just another chapter in the story of, it's what happened to the record industry, it's what happened to the publishing industry, it's what happened to the bank. Maybe it's just the, the next chapter in that story. But it doesn't have to be that way, we very strongly believe at Monetize. We believe that banks can actually put themselves right at the heart of this new form of commerce. And there's a winning formula, as we see it, for doing that. Now, Internet banking around the world, the average internet banking user logs in about four or five times a month. If you do mobile banking properly, such as working with Monetize, then you drive levels of engagement that are unprecedented. 25, 30, 40 logins a month. It becomes a new habit that people get into. I'm sure many of you will have this, that you now check what's gone through your account on the morning commute while you're waiting for a meeting, while you're waiting for the next speaker to come on stage, whatever it might be. And the significance of this figure, if you get to 25 or so logins a month, that puts mobile banking in most countries amongst the top six or eight most used applications. So alongside Twitter, and Facebook and people's email clients and Angry Birds and Candy Crush. So it means that mobile banking earns a place on that coveted front screen of the smartphone. And that's really important because it means that banks then have the opportunity to start leveraging that high engagement to start bringing in other useful services to their customers. So um, a simple example, I. I've got a contract mobile phone, but my kids have got prepaid mobile phones. And what I used to do to get them prepaid credit was go down to the supermarket, you know, get the little bit of paper, call up, do the IVR thing and all that. But actually now my bank has put topping up prepaid airtime into my mobile banking app. And actually that's the way I do it now. And that's great news for the telco because that's a, a, a cheap um, distribution channel for their airtime. It's great news for me because it's certainly 10 times better than going down to the local corner shop. And it's actually driving a new revenue stream for the bank because it's earning them a little bit more revenue each time I do one of those top-ups. So the opportunity here is, if you think about these other sectors of finance, so there is going to be somewhere that I go on my mobile phone in future to pay other people, to buy my iTunes vouchers, to top up my Oyster card, to buy cinema tickets, to buy airline tickets, to buy airtime credit, to get a trusted source of local offers. Now, who's it going to be that it becomes my habit to go to for all those sectors of commerce? Is it going to be Twitter or Facebook? Or could it be my bank? Well, that's the opportunity for banks to use the assets that they've got, to use this high engagement, to use the rich data that they have about their customers, and especially to use the trust that they have in their brand to make banks the destination for their customers to go to for some of these services. So we asked um, consumers in the UK, Spain, and Germany, what would you think to the idea of doing mobile commerce via your bank. And they said, well, actually, you know, we would feel more confident in mobile commerce if it was brought to us via our bank, because I guess it's the sort of thing, if something goes wrong with a PayPal transaction, where exactly is the nearest PayPal branch where I can go in and bang on the table and shout at someone? So banks may not be, in all regards, entirely popular, but there's a great deal of trust in stuff that is brought via a bank. So the opportunity for banks here is by leveraging that data, that high engagement and that trust, not to wither away into being the dumb pipe in the future of commerce, but to actually play a bigger role in their customers' lives as the trusted source of this sort of commerce. Now, banks that want to do this have got some technical challenges um, if they want to address it, and that's what monetizes business, because I should come to the subject of the presentation, is all about. So what we do is really two things. First of all, we have a technology platform, in effect, sitting in the cloud that has in it all the specialist software that a bank needs to make mobile money services secure, 
easy to use and has all that stuff in it. So if they want to do person-to-person -person payments or location-based offers or QR codes or account-to-account -account transfers, all that stuff, all that software is in our platform. So banks can concentrate on doing the banking stuff and they can use our software to, um, to fulfill all those functions. And the second thing that we do is we connect off to the ecosystem. So we connect off to those third parties who have the sort of content that banks want to enhance their customer propositions with. So in the example of my bank, when I click what's the balance of my bank account, we route the inquiry into the bank's back-end system and then present it to the customer. When I click I want to top up my kids' airtime, we first of all check that I've got enough money in my bank account. Then we connect off to a mobile phone top-up aggregator and actually make the top-up happen there. So in a way, we're an enabler of mobile money. We're white label, you never see monetize as a consumer brand. We work for other companies, particularly for banks. And happily, we're not the only people who see the world this way. So we have uh, more than 350 banks around the world who use us and payment companies and uh, indeed, Telefonica as well. Um, so a whole variety of different companies using our software to create the propositions that work for their customers. And this, this is mass market stuff, and we saw that with the show of hands, right? Everybody who's got a smartphone is checking their bank balances on it. So we have more than 28 million end consumers around the world. They're not our customers. They're our customers' customers using our platform. And between them, they're driving more than 70 billion dollars worth of transfers payments um, uh, initiated across our platform. And as I said, we, we do this all around the world, and you'll notice uh, here, this isn't a question of like a, a white label platform that you just colour with your brand. Different companies are doing different things using different parts of our technology. It's a very configurable setup. So we're doing this all around the world, um, and actually, there are now more than 1,000 people in Monetize, but one of our most important R&D hubs is just down the road from here, which is why we're very pleased to be here today. So we have more than 110 people in an R&D hub in Nantgaru, growing all the time. We've had fantastic support from the Welsh Government in getting that set up, and we continue to work very closely both with the local community, with the government and with the local education bodies to encourage more and more ICT education in this region. So, we're a global company headquartered in London. The time zone and the communication links to London are a very important reason why this, why this area works very well for us as a place to actually have uh, such an important part of our operational setup. So there we are. Uh, I hope that's given you a bit of a sense of the exciting space that we're operating in, what Monetize does there, and the reason that we're here today because of the importance of, uh, of Wales in the way that we deliver these services. So uh, I hope that was useful to you. I've got to go to a fintech panel now, I'm afraid, but I will be outside at our stand um, a little bit later on if anyone has any questions. Thanks very much.